I'm here with Will Howes, premier MLP player and 6.4 duper. He's going to take us through a day of drills with him. He just got drafted to the fives. Who's on your team? Super pumped. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. I'm with Anna Lee, Zane Navratil, and Mari Humberg. What's the first thing we're going to be doing today? So typically I start out with just some standard dinking, then some hands, and then we'll do a couple games based on that. Key to this, I'd say, is just like staying super disciplined, you know, getting a rhythm to start off the practice. Right. Making sure you get the feet going and you're always set for every ball. So after running the dinking in hands, I typically will do like a kitchen line game to, you know, just get the body moving, make it a little competitive and get the practice started. Um, you can speed up, you can lob, just everything half court. Okay, got it. All right, zero, 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 play to seven. Ooh, nice. That's a good look though. Yeah. All right, one. One out. Oh my God. Holy smokes. That was good. Nice. Two that out. counter. Yeah, thanks. Nice shot. Thanks. Nice. Ooh, thanks. That's why it's tough. If I go into your backhand, like I almost can't do that. Yeah, I think I have an advantage with the lefty, but once people catch on, I get yeah. in trouble. Nice. Thanks. Sorry. Bag. No, you're good. Good shot. Ah, five four. Oh, yeah. Woo! That was a Quick. bad thing for me. No, I'm so not doing that right. See what I mean, though? That's a good example of what you were saying. I get antsy. We're in a long rally. I try to speed it up off the bounce while you're just more cool, calm, collected throughout. Nice. Oh. Now we'll switch over to the other side. Just to make sure we're practicing our right and left side, you know, while we're warming up. Let's do it. Ah! Oh, it died. It died. That's I like good. That. That's I like good. That. Oh. Yeah, uh -uh. see? Foolish. Stay patient. 2 1, good example. Here we go. Nice. Very Thanks. good. So it's better take out of the air than it is off the bounce. Don't do it off the bounce. Yeah, you're right. Nice. Good hands. 3 2. Miss it. Woo! Sorry. 
Nice, great point. That's a good point. Good hands. Yeah, that's really good. Nice. Dumb. Just uh, a little too far reaching or no? No, I like that though. I mean, to work on your flick, you have to hit lower flicks. Yeah. And that's how you learn how to hit different flicks. Yeah. When I'm playing in practice, you know, I try to take balls that are a little bit lower. Right. And try to manipulate it with my wrist and see what I'm capable of. Okay. So I feel more confident from the higher spots. That I'm makes playing. sense. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's higher, I'll be super confident if yeah. I'm confident down here. Exactly. Just kind of like pushing the boundaries of what you're capable of on your flicks. Right. So I think that's a good take. Oh, not like that. Good game. Good game. Good game. So typically I'll go from this to doing some resets and then drops. And then I do a drill that a lot of other players actually don't do too much. I do like drops into resets and I'll flow forwards and then back. Nice. Nice. Oh, good ball. I feel like I struggle with this consistently, where if you're making like six, seven, I'm missing after like two. This is definitely like the hardest shot in pickleball to learn. The resets, say. right? Yeah. Here we go. Especially when you have someone hitting the ball so hard at you with a lot of shape. Nice. Nice. Oh, we'll take that. Oh, he's got it. The ultimate reset. Nice. Oh. Oh, that's Careful, out. these are going out. Nice. Good ball. good nice nice i do this well in practice but in an actual game i feel like i might tighten up a little bit would you say you're using a lot of wrist on this or more of like all shoulder to do this consistently yeah i i'd say i use a lot of wrist but you it really depends on the players you're playing a lot of players will drop and then they'll come all the way in especially like more athletic players yeah for example james and christian they're very fast they, they have a tennis background They'll drop the ball and then they'll come in very fast. Right. They'll look to attack off of an aggressive drop. Right. Versus someone like a, like a Colin Johns. He's just going to like, kind of like float the ball. He's going to try to get forward. He's going to come to the reset position. He's not right. going to try and necessarily attack off I of see. his drop. So you have to be very like specific about the shot you play, depending on who you're playing and where they are in the court and the drop that they hit. Nice, good hands. Thanks. Woo! Oh! Right, Tanner, my bad. Now I'll move back and hit some drops. There we go. Nice. Nice. Oh. Ah, nice shot. All right, cool. Now I'll start flowing forwards and back. Okay. It's a good drill just to incorporate both resets and drops. Got it. Ah, sorry. That's oh, a good ball. There it is. Nice shot. Thanks. Ah. Nice. All right, so I'll hit a couple resets. Nice. Oh, that almost went over. Here we go. It's good. Yep.
There we go. Hey! Oh! Oh! Let's go. <laughs> oh, good. I'll take that. Good. Now I'll hit a couple drafts. Nice. Right in the kitchen. Yep. Nice. Ah, that's high. We're good. Good. Nice. Ah, there we go. Now we'll throw in some cross stakes. All right, some cross court. So uh, here's a tip for like the four, four, five, five, oh level. I see a lot of times players will pattern lock. So they'll just sit on the exact same shot for like five or six shots in a row, right? Like I'll just keep going cross. Right. One thing I like to incorporate in the drill is making sure I'm mixing up into my opponent's body through the middle moving the ball around because you don't want to give your opponent that confidence from that same spot because then they'll get into a rhythm and they'll start playing better. You want to always keep them on their toes. Good advice. Right, so always moving it around. Maybe changing the shape on the ball sometimes. When I teach, so, when I, teach I say never hit it into the same spot more than twice. I like that. So just to keep it. That's yeah. great advice. Try to take some out of the air when you can. Move it around. Are you ever cutting these or putting a lot on it? I mean, it, it depends on the ball. Like if you get a ball that's sitting a little bit more, then you can be a little more aggressive with the shot you hit. Yeah. You know, if it sits up, it doesn't like die off the bounce. But yeah. when you get something that's low, you want to make sure that you're controlled with it. Right. And you don't try to do too much because then you're going to start missing more. Yeah. Another thing to note is like when you're playing more aggressive players, they're going to take more out of the air. So right. When you try to hit more aggressive dinks, typically if you hit a more aggressive dink and it's firmer, it's going to go further back. Right. But if you have a player that's taking more out of the air, they're going to take that out of the air and they're going to flick it towards the person in front oh, of them and be aggressive. Right. So what you see at like the highest level a lot is you start seeing a lot more dead dinks because people reach so far in right. to attack. J-Dub does a great job of this. He reaches really far in. So whenever you're dinking with him, you know, if you're on this side, you only have from like, I would say here forward to work with. Right. Otherwise, if you hit it past this point, he's going to flick it. And then you have the best hands in the world against you. Like just that kind of like shallow short ball. You can't do anything off of it. It's nothing special, but uh, it just keeps the point going. Yeah, exactly. Just like right there. Yeah. So you'd say the speed that I'm hitting right now is good for high level play. Like don't try to do too much. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is like, this is a game of errors at the end of the day. Yeah. And the people who miss more are probably going to lose the match. Right. You want to be as solid as you possibly can. Good day. Thanks. Good day. Nice. Can we go other way? Yeah. All right, cool. Oh, ah! triple hit. Good day, King Tanner. Thanks. That's a good example. Yeah. I tried to peel it back to you, but normally I'd be going down the line or through the middle there. Floats a little bit flick. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't have a lot of room to work with. So when I play tournaments, I feel super confident in practice. I get to the tournaments and I feel like all the shots that I've been practicing just go out the window. I get super tight. Yeah. What advice would you have to that? Yeah. I mean, I would say just increase your margins from the start, you know, try to build into confidence throughout the match. If you play a little bit more nervous when you're starting and starting with the dinks, where are you beginning? Like what's the, what's your favorite pattern? Like starting off wide to the middle. I'm really confident in my drive. I'll probably come out swinging to put a lot of pressure on people, right? Like drive, close, drive, crash. And then when that, you know, as I settle in the match, start dropping Yeah. and then play a more like 
out wide, through the middle, out wide, through the middle. Moving I try to open up the opportunity to flick with my back end. Now we'll move into some serves and returns. Yeah, it's got some speed behind it. Yeah. Very underrated portion of the game. Serves and returns. Super important. When you serve big, it opens up a lot of opportunity on your third shot. So you see that's a little bit shorter. Yeah. You're going to have an easier opportunity to drop off something than a firmer, deeper return. Right, right. So you're starting to see a lot of players go yeah. more into a bigger serve and bigger return. Kind of a singles type style. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that one's getting ripped. Nice. Nice. It'll help to play a lot of singles, too. You'll become a lot more confident in your serves and returns in general. So typically I'll start with this if I'm doing a singles practice, but this is just a good cat and mouse drill. You're gonna have one player go cross court and one player go down the line. And it's a rhythm hitting drill. You wanna make sure that you're putting a lot of balls in the court, you're super physical from the start, and it's a great way to get your practice started. I go down the line and then you just keep moving. Ah, oh, I see. This is how I warm up for singles every time, right off the rip. You know, get your body going, get the blood flowing. A lot of balls in the court. Chris and Alshon actually kind of got me going on this. This is nice. We practice singles a lot together, and he does this every time as well. Cool. Now we'll play some uh, skinny singles just to end it. Oh, oh, nice. One zero. Ooh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I didn't even wow. think it was there. <clears throat> Woo! Oh, that's not smart. Uh-oh. 
Got it. Yep. Ooh, yep. No! Yep. Oh, nice shot. Yeah. You had me there. That was a good look. That was the last drill in the drilling routine. I want to say to you what I think I've learned from you, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Sure. So I can take it with me on the road and so can the viewers. So the main takeaway that I think I've, I've learned, learned is less is more. So people at my level, I'm a 5'5", five five, you're a 6'4", so there's a big gap there. What I think I've learned with you is everything is soft and simple, and you're comfortable hitting like 50 dinks in a rally. Whereas for me, after like... 10, 12, 15 dinks. I'm looking for an aggressive two-hander. I'm looking for a speed up off the bounce. I'm trying to use a head fake, trying to be fancy. Yeah. Where you're more is just slow and controlled. You do it for two hours. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say making sure that you're very calculated with your aggression and making sure you're picking the right balls to uh, to attack is super important. You know, the hands get really, really good at the top of the game. So making sure you're you know, when you're you're making the right decisions on attacking. The second thing I learned is really going for the serve. So you were ripping serves and I was really struggling with them back. And then I was hitting serve. You're like, you got to hit them a little harder than that. I hit them harder, you instantly miss a return. So mm -hmm. especially in tournaments, if your opponent's tight, if you're giving them a lollipop serve, you're almost letting them off the hook. Yeah. But what I took from you is if you really rip it, put the pressure on and set yourself up for an easier drive, an easier drop. Yeah, absolutely. Serves and returns are becoming such an important factor in the game. Opening up opportunities on thirds makes it easier to get forward when, right. you hit a, when you hit a good serve. So that's becoming super important at the pro level. The third thing that I took away from this that goes back to the first thing that I said is just speed is not everything. When you're watching it online or even in person, you might think like everybody's trying to rip the dinks and do this and do that, but it's really just putting it in play. And the strategy is just make your opponent hit another ball as opposed to trying to create in a sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are times where creating is the right thing, but at the end of the day, Pickleball is a, is a game of errors more than a game of offense, I would say. You want to be That's controlled smart. with your aggression. You want to put pressure on. But it, if you're making more balls than your opponents, you're probably going to win the match. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to follow along with Will's journey and career, he just quit his full-time job. Will, where can they follow you at? Uh, Will Howells underscore PB on Instagram. Appreciate it, guys.